Hi, Chris here with another project concerning my CNC router. Until now, my router was controlled by a modified PC running Linux CNC. This thing was rocking an Intel Pentium CPU, which was already obsolete when I built the machine years ago. Now it seems to lose the last little bit of life left in it, so I needed to look for a new solution. Since I grew to like Linux CNC, I wanted to be able to use that G-code interpreter. This meant that the system needed to run Linux as an OS. In addition, I wanted to design a solution that is cheap and a lot more compact than my old one. That looked like a pretty clear-cut task for a Raspberry Pi especially since those things got really powerful in the last two generations. After searching the internet for a good little while, going with a Mesa FPGA card appears to be the way to go for the ambitioned Linux CNC user. These things seem to be a pretty decent choice if the Linux CNC forums are anything to go by, but on the other hand, I can't see a reason to use an FPGA to control the router, since the Raspberry already has 27 GPA opens to do that. Also, I wasn't able to find good documentation on those Mesa cards in combination with the Raspberry, so I decided to roll my own solution. How hard could that be? First, we would need some kind of display. In order to keep the whole unit compact, I decided to go with a small and cheap 7-inch touchscreen. So let's see what our favorite Chinese stuff store has to offer. 35 bucks for a reasonably sized touchscreen looks fine to me. With that out of the way, we now can tackle the electronics part. As we discussed before, the Raspberry provides a good amount of GPIOs. Only problem here is that the IOs operate at 3.3V instead of the typical 5V used by most CNC controller boards. So we need to fix that with some hardware. Fortunately, there are several IC companies offering chips for just that purpose. Therefore, it should be doable to come up with a neat PCB that handles the conversion from 3.3V to 5V and the other way around. For controlling the router itself, I intend to use one of those dirt cheap CNC breakout boards from China. These are basically a bunch of optocouplers along with some relays and analog outs. It would not be too hard to add that directly onto the custom PCB, but for the price of those things you can't even get the parts. I had also been using one of those things in my old setup and it worked flawlessly for me. So one of those it is. These boards are intended to be used with a PC parallel port. We could adapt our 5V GPIO interface using some custom wiring harness, but that wouldn't look too nice. Since we also need to supply our Raspberry with power, I decided to bake all of that on a second PCB. From the breakout board, we now can control our VFD as well as all the motors on the machine. But I guess for most of us it will look a little more like this. So much for theory, but let's see what that would look like in practice. I'd say we tackle the easy stuff first. As the base of the whole operation is a Raspberry Pi, we need to prepare an image that is real-time capable. This basically means that the system will respond in a predetermined time. This is kind of critical since we intend to drive our steppers more or less directly with the GPIO pins. For that, we first burn a standard Raspberry N image, which is now called Raspberry Pi OS, onto an SD card. Under Linux, you can just use DD, but there are step by step instructions for all OSs on the Raspberry homepage. With that out of the way, we activate SSH via placing a file called SSH in the boot directory of the newly burned SD card. This allows us to use an SSH client such as PuTTY to access the Raspberry without hooking it up to a screen first. So we should now be able to SSH into our Raspberry by using Pi as a username and whatever IP the Raspberry has in our network. Seems to work flawlessly. The next job 
on the list is to make that vanilla Raspberry OS real-time capable. Fortunately, the guys at the Linux kernel team did pretty much most of the job already for us by creating the preempt RT kernel patch. It is a little bit of a job to compile that thing though. I found a good step-by-step -step instruction you should be able to follow with some basic terminal skills. Check the link in the description below. It will take a while, but in the end you will end up with a patched kernel. Now we copy the file onto our SD card. In this case I did it over the network using SCP. After SSHing into our Raspberry, we prepare the new kernel and switch out the kernel. This whole process is also described in the link below, so I won't bother you with the details. But we need to check if all the effort worked out for us. The simplest way is to check if the kernel version contains RT in a version name. The tutorial also explains a way to check the real-time characteristics using a cycle time plot. But for the sake of keeping this video relatively short, I will just go on with the next part, which is installing Linux CNC. I did hope to find a repo, or at least a dead package. Unfortunately, I had no luck there. So building from source it is. If you do that on a fresh installation of Raspberry OS, you probably will need to install a whole bunch of dependencies first. Just check the GitHub page and follow the build instructions. Also, by the way, make sure not to do a distro upgrade, since that would reverse all the hard work we just did. Building Linux CNC should be pretty straightforward, if you stick to the instructions from GitHub. I'll also put the link to the repo in the description. Done. In order to check if that worked, we either need to connect the Raspberry up to some peripherals or if you are lazy, like me, at least a remote desktop connection. Looks like we got lucky. With that done, the Raspberry is finished for now. Ok, next job. As mentioned previously, we still have the issue that the Raspberry speaks 3.3V and our breakout board speaks 5V. The typical way to solve that is using a logic lever shifter IC. Since I wanted to keep some flexibility, I decided to go with a bidirectional variant. This allowed me to define inputs and outputs in software as they were needed. Regarding the logic lever shifter, I used an NXP part for my first prototype, which you can see here. Although that did work, the ICs got uncomfortably hot so we changed them to TI ones. Also, we need to supply our Raspberry and the breakout board with power. In order to avoid additional power supplies, I put a DC to DC converter on the PCB as well. As a first prototype, I did produce PCBs in this form factor. They did work quite well, apart from the hot running NXP ICs. While swapping those, I also decided to split the board up. This made the design a lot more space efficient. Also, I ended up with a simple but flexible logic lever shifter PCB head for the Raspberry, which can be used in all sorts of projects. Especially if there is a need to talk to 5V electronics, such as Arduinos. I also put the schematics for that little board up on GitHub, in case someone else has a use case for them. You can find a link to the GitHub page in the description. There will also be a link to a place where you can get kits if you don't want to get through the trouble of getting them made yourself. That left me with a second small board that carries the power supply and the adapter for the parallel interface of the breakout board. This PCB will conveniently stack on top of the first one. The second batch of prototypes came out quite well. Even the breakout board did fit quite nicely. I printed a simple quick connect frame to keep the boards in place while still giving me the option to remove it from the enclosure. But before we can go on with testing, we need to configure Linux CNC for our hardware configuration. Unfortunately, that did open a whole nother can of worms, which I did not anticipate. 
Basically, I ran into two main problems. The first one being the configuration of the GPIOs itself. Linux CNC offers a very configurable way to interface your hardware using the so-called hardware abstraction layer. This allows you to generate, process and map signals similar to the way you would do in hardware, but in software via HAL files. This system has quite a steep learning curve to it, at least for me. But since I did gain quite a bit of experience using that system over the last few years, I figured it should be possible to come up with something. Unfortunately, I did not really find a lot of documentation for the issue on hand. The only resource I could find was a GPIO driver and a short corresponding demonstration HAL file. Since that is quite hard to find, I will put a link in the description below. Based on this information, I managed to configure the GPIOs according to my hardware configuration. If anyone attempts to do something similar, I gladly provide my HAL file for additional reference. Just comment below. The second issue I did not see coming was the GMockerPy, which is in my humble opinion the best UI for Linux CNC, did not support resolutions lower than 980x750. Since all the cheap touch screens you can get are 1024 by 600 max, we have another task on our hands. But how hard can it be to resize a few icons? Turns out not easy at all. The UI is written for an old version of GTK using Glade. Since I was not able to get the older version of Glade running quite right with Linux CNC dependencies, I ended up making the modifications directly in the XML file. With all the layers of UI elements on top of each other, this was a major pain. But finally I ended up with a modification that worked for me. Now it's time to think about an enclosure. In my typical manner, I ordered an electrical cabinet that seemed to be able to hold the necessary electronics to control my CNC without much planning. Having a closer look at the situation revealed pretty soon that choosing a larger version might not have been a bad idea. But with a little bit of creative component placement, I managed to fit everything, at least in CAD. Due to the tight fit, I also added two fans in the top and the bottom of the enclosure. This should help with heat dissipation, since I could not meet the specified open space requirement around the VFD. That should prevent any unforeseen firing messes. At least I hope so. If you intend to do something similar, I would strongly advocate for a larger enclosure. In order to keep the length of this video somewhat bearable, I did the preparation of the cabinet off camera. I basically mounted the touch screen as well as a few buttons. With the quick connect for the control unit mounted on the back plate, we can already test the UI. Now there's just one more thing to do, which is to check if all that stuff will actually fit in there. Since I did the design work in CAD, the assembly was quite straightforward. As a reference, I printed out the whole pattern on a 1 to 1 scale, transferred and drilled the holes and mounted the stepper drivers, power supplies and the VFD. It took me a good amount of time to make it fit and do most of the wiring, but finally I got it to work. After final round of testing, the hardware part is mostly done. So we can attach the unit to the machine and wire the steppers and the spindle in. So let's see what we ended up with. Does not look too shabby in my opinion. I now used this system for a few months without much of any problems. During this time the machine had racked up probably around 80 machine hours. Surely that is not conclusive in terms of a long duration test, but it's a good first step 
I ended up with a compact and functional solution which allowed me to keep using Linux CNC. In terms of cost, the project is a little less clear cut. Overall material costs are pretty low, but the amount of work involved in getting the whole system to run would probably justify buying some sort of an integral machine controller. If you have any thoughts on that subject, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.